Monday segment, we're talking about engineering your income with financial advisor Rob Wilson. He's here with a special guest this morning, Davite Coakley, in town for the National Convention of the Society of Black Engineers. Good morning, and Rob Wilson, good morning to you. Good morning. Yeah, this is a perfect time with all these wonderful people in town to talk about the future and some great careers. You're right, and, and the big reason that I wanted to talk about this is because we've got this big student loan issue right now. So there's news that came out recently that said student loans have now outpaced credit card debt in terms of the total amount that consumers owe on them. So wow. student loans are about $870 billion right now in the United States versus credit card debt, which is up around $700 billion. The problem is 10% of those loans are actually in default right now, mm. and you cannot discharge your student loans in bankruptcy. So you've got to figure out a way to pay those loans back. The average person has about uh, $23,000 in, in student loan debt. Mm -hmm. So the issue is you've really got to make sure that you pursue a career that's going to pay you enough to be able to pay these student loans back. Absolutely. So people might be thinking, should I go to college? Is it a good investment? Yeah. So what we know is that even though the, the tuitions have been rising and the, and the student debt is rising, it's still a good investment to go to college. So if you have a bachelor's degree, you're gonna make on average about 84% more over your lifetime than someone who only has a, uh, a high school degree okay. or a high school diploma. So it is uh, a good investment, but the issue here is what you study matters. Mm. And so if you're, especially if you're a parent and you're thinking about sending your kids to college, it makes sense to have your kids study something that's gonna pay them a high salary. And what we see is that it's really engineering and technical careers that are providing these high salaries. Um, how long you study doesn't matter. So some students tend to think that if I go and I get an advanced degree, maybe I'll make even more money. How long you study doesn't matter. What you study is the most important thing. Okay, so we've got uh, these wonderful black engineers in town. Tell me a little bit about the conference and, and who you all brought, brought, who's coming for it. Okay, this is our 30th annual convention. It'll be taking place March 28th through April 1st. Um, the organization is comprised of pre-college um, initiative students, which is K through 12 um, young students interested in engineering. We have collegiate students who are actually, you know, looking to get their engineering degree currently right now. And then we have actually technical technical professionals that have graduated, have their engineering degree and are out in the in the in the world working as engineers and Fantastic. such. Fantastic. And how many people will be coming to be part of the convention? We're expecting about eighty five hundred Fantastic. In attendance. That yes. is great. Okay, so that engineering is one of the best of these careers for a good income, right? With, without a doubt. The mean, median annual income okay. of uh, individuals that have a bachelor's degree in engineering is about $75,000. Compare it with $47,000 for uh, humanities majors and education and psych majors whose median income is about $42,000. So wow. you see that there's a very big disparity there. Um, if you take a look at, at the top 10 uh, careers or majors that give you the highest starting salary mm -hmm. eight of those careers are engineering related and wow. the number one is petroleum petroleum engineering where the the average starting salary is about eighty thousand oh dollars and so goodness. that's a very significant difference between majoring in some of these other areas and that is going to give you a significant ability to pay those student loans back and really get a return on your investment yeah. uh, and overall STEM majors, which stands for uh, science, technology, engineering, and math, those majors are going to make about 50% more over their lifetime. Uh, so you can really see that these individuals are in high demand, and they're in demand even in non-technical fields. So a lot of people mm. may not know that my bachelor's degree is actually in uh, engineering. Really? I studied industrial engineering uh, at the University of Pittsburgh. I worked in consulting for a while. I switched to the financial industry as, after I went back to school and got my MBA. Huh. But the point is, engineering is so much about being able to solve problems in your analytical ability mm -hmm. that even if you're not in a technical field, engineers are very still in high demand. So, Devita, tell me what kind of majors you know include engineering and what kind of careers that okay. could lead to. Okay, majors that include engineering is chemical engineering, civil engineering, like myself, mm -hmm. um, mechanical, industrial, engineers, anything along those lines. And he mentioned petroleum engineering. I take it that's with the whole Marcella Shale. That's probably part of the gas oh, industry. With, with, without a doubt. Those yeah. those types of skills are in, in high demand. And there's a very big career fair at the convention that goes on for two days, which uh, folks will be uh, trying to uh, scoop up a lot of those jobs. Yeah. So what? And so, in addition to those kind of jobs, what other kind of jobs might people maybe not necessarily think of when they think engineer or these STEM careers? Um, technicians, 
those anybody interested in nanotechnology, mathematician and accounting, those all have this the STEM basis behind them. And just like Rob said, he did, he started out as an engineer, but then he got into finance and accounting. Those are the type of principles that engineering will teach you while you're in school, but then you can go and do many other things. Wonderful. And of course, this one focuses on black engineers. Do you find there's a need to really recruit more African Americans to this field? I definitely do believe that. I think um, there's a lot of emphasis on um, looking for black engineers, especially going on right now. Mm -hmm. um, so I do think there is a need. Rob, what do you think as someone who studied engineering will help motivate more people? Is it getting the word out about the money and the income? I, I do think that you have to throw that out there because that's something that motivates people. But I think you also have to take the fear away from it because a, lo a lot of students will start out in engineering and maybe switch to another major because it is difficult. So you ha do have to have some type of support system there. But just take a little bit of the fear away. They're just numbers and they're they're in a book and, and the, the professors and teachers are very uh, well accomplished and they can help you understand and so you don't have to be afraid of math and science and engineering you just yeah. may have to study a little longer and do you think that starts at even a younger age I know some girls especially are kind of you know maybe driven away from it do you find it has to start really early I believe it needs to start very early um, as a high school um, individual myself when I began with Nesby it was Nesby that began my interest in the national I'm sorry that began my interest in engineering and if it mm -hmm. wasn't for the organization then I probably wouldn't have considered um, engineering as a possible um, career and I definitely don't regret it at all. Oh so, fantastic. Yes. Well it sounds like a, a great program. Thank you all both for telling us more about it. Thanks for having us. And uh, again thanks to Tavita for bringing the convention to Pittsburgh and being here to tell us about it and to find out more about the National Society of Black Engineers and this week's convention just go to kdka.com slash PTL. You'll also find a link to contact Rob Wilson of Laser Capital Management, a regular Money Monday contributor here on Pittsburgh Today Live.